All right. So today we're going to talk about the trophic structure of the coral reef, okay, and um, how you know who eats whom, and how energy gets passed up through the d the food chain, okay, and um, how they can actually have such abundant life on a coral reef where there's so few nutrients, right? So you're going to have to remember some stuff from first semester. Okay. Oh no. First semester. Um, so remember last semester where we talked about ecology, right? And we talked about like the trophic pyramid. Okay. What starts off all food chains? Primary producers, right? They are the base of the food chain. And they're the ones that do photosynthesis. They're the ones that make energy that then gets passed up the food chain, yes? OK, what two things do primary producers need? Sunlight and nutrients. Good, sunlight and nutrients. They have to have those things in order to do photosynthesis. So we're in the tropics. We've got lots of sunlight. But remember, we are in nutrient-poor water. Right? Coral needs nutrient poor water in order to survive. So how do you get these crazy, biodiverse, beautiful things called coral reefs in a place where there are so few nutrients? Okay? Um, we're going to look today at how that actually happens. Okay? Because coral reefs are considered to be like the, the tropical rainforest of the ocean because they just have so much life, so much biodiversity. They're awesome. Okay? It's so pretty. Um, so, how do we get so, so many animals living in a place where there's not very many nutrients? Well, you're going to need nutrients in order to be able to um, do photosynthesis if you're a primary producer. And um, you're going to need one of the ways that the corals and stuff kind of like make sure that the nutrients that they do have stick around is they're very efficient at recycling the nutrients. Okay. So remember, zooxanthellae and coral have this symbiotic relationship, mutualistic relationship, and they're very good at taking like the nutrients from the zooxanthellae, passing it to the coral. The coral uses it and then passes it back. Okay, so they th and those nutrients will change form, but they go back and forth between the two. Okay, and very little is lost in that process. Okay, so they're very very good at recycling the nutrients that they do have. Um, so in that symbiotic relationship, they're very very good at recycling. All right. Here's a picture to kind of hopefully help you see that a little bit better. Uh, so you can see carbon dioxide, water, and nutrients are used by the zooxanthellae to do photosynthesis. They make sugar and oxygen, pass it to the coral, take the sugar and oxygen, do cellular respiration, and make what the coral or zooxanthellae need in order to continue to do photosynthesis. So they pass these nutrients back and forth, and they're very good at recycling it. You also have other members of the reef community that have symbiotic algae as well. And those reef members are going to also be very good at recycling those nutrients. Okay, So you're going to get things like sponges and giant clams and even some sea squirts that will have symbiotic algae. And they will recycle those nutrients very efficiently with them as well. So they're good at recycling. but you're also going to get, um, you're also going to need new nutrients to come in because while they're very good at recycling, they're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Okay, so some nutrients are lost. So they're going to need a source of new nutrients to be introduced to the ecosystem in order for the ecosystem to continue to be supported. Um, and so one of the ways that you actually get new nutrients brought to the reef is with fish. Okay, so there's certain kinds of fish that will like they shelter on the reef during the day. They like sleep on the reef during the day. Um, and then at night, they go out to the open ocean and they feed. Okay, so they feed out in the open ocean. So they go away from the reef, feed, and then they come back during the day again. And when they come back, they poop. Poop is fertilizer. It's nutrients. Okay, so that's one way that new nutrients get brought to the reef or by these animals that leave and then come back and poop. All right, so fish poop. Um, so that's one way that new nutrients are brought to the reef. Another way that new nutrients can be introduced is with nitrogen fixation. 
So do you guys remember, again, first semester, um, when we talked about cyanobacteria and we talked about how the process of nitrogen fixation. So cyanobacteria take nitrogen gas and they can break apart the bonds between the nitrogen and they can make those into like ammonia and nitrates and nitrites. And those nitrates and nitrites are the fertilizer or the nutrients that many primary producers need, right? So cyanobacteria are one of the few things in the world that can actually do this. And you do get a lot of cyanobacteria that live on reefs. And so the cyanobacteria can do nitrogen fixation and actually provide some of the nutrients to the reef. Okay. Another way that you can get nutrients in is in the currents. So the currents are nutrient poor, but there's pretty strong currents in the tropics. And even if it's just got a little bit of nutrients in it, a little bit over time with a strong current adds up. Okay, so you can get some nutrients brought in by the currents as well. You and those currents will also carry zooplankton in to the corals to eat. All right, um, and then you also get big animals that come and spend some time on the reef. So like turtles come to get cleaned. Lots of animals come to the reef to get clean of their parasites, and when they come, they poop too. And that's also fertilizer for the reef. All right? So all of these ways nutrients get brought to the reef allows for there to be a lot of primary productivity. Because now you get lots of nutrients and lots of sunlight. And so all of the primary producers that are on the reef can do lots of photosynthesis. And if there's lots of photosynthesis going on, lots of energy to get past up the food chain, okay? So the things that are on the reef that allow them to do photosynthesis, or that do photosynthesis, are the zooxanthellae, right, in the coral. And the zooxanthellae in the coral do photosynthesis and give the energy to the coral. And the nutrients that they create get passed up the food chain. Um, when things eat the coral directly. So you actually do get a lot of animals on the reef that eat the coral. So like butterfly fish, parrot fish, all sorts of different kinds of fish will actually eat the coral and get nutrients that way. So the Suzanne Philly can pass energy up the food chain in that method. They also, um, corals also produce mucus. So the corals will produce that mucus with the energy that they get from the from the zooxanthellae, and then things eat the mucus off the coral. Okay, and so energy will get passed up the food chain from the zooxanthellae that way as well. Uh, turf algae, so you get these little types of algae that grow, they're like short filamentous algae that all grow together in clumps. And they're called turf algae because they look like turf. Um, they're an algae, they're a primary producer. They get eaten a lot on the reef, and so they'll be doing photosynthesis. They need the nutrients. And so you get lots of things that will eat the turf algae on the reef. And um, scientists debate whether or not the turf algae or the zooxanthellae are kind of like the most important primary producer or which one does most of the photosynthesis on the reef. So some people say zooxanthellae, some people say turf algae as to what's kind of like the main one. Okay, so you'll hear debate on that. And then cyanobacteria, blue-green algae, does nitrogen fixation and is also a primary producer and can get eaten and passed up the food chain. All right? So you get lots of nutrients, lots of sunlight, going to the reef, primary producers doing photosynthesis, creating energy, and then that energy can get passed up the food chain to all sorts of different kinds of animals. So I'm just briefly going to talk about some of the different kinds of animals that you can see on the reef. We've spent months talking about all of these different kinds of animals, right, and looking at their biology and how they carry out the seven essential functions. Yeah? So I'm just going to mention the kinds of animals and say, you know, the kinds of feeders that they can be um, and then, you know, talk about what level of the food chain you may find them in. So sponges and cnidarians you can find in reefs. Uh, sponges are going to be filter feeders. They're going to be filtering out things like zooplankton and phytoplankton out of the water. Um, they're going to help to keep the water clear for the coral. And the sponges are much more abundant like on Caribbean reefs than Pacific reefs. You find a lot more sponges in the Caribbean. 
Um, Nidarians, obviously you have Nidarians and coral, but you also get lots of anemones that will live on the reef. Big anemones that, you know, house like clownfish, they have symbiotic relationships with clownfish. Um, so you will find lots of anemones on the reef. Um, and they will be, you know, suspension feeders, eating little fish and stuff like that. Annelids, worms, okay, they are going to be a bunch of different feeding types. So you can have filter feeders like the Christmas tree worm and the, um, the feather duster worm, suspension feeders really. Uh, and then you also have like predators that are moving around. So this picture at the bottom left, that's a fire worm. Okay, so it's a worm that's moving around, finding prey, finding stuff to eat, little crustaceans, whatever it can find. Um, and then palolo worms on the right. Okay, those are going to be involved in the bioerosion phase of the reef. They're actually going to burrow into the bases of coral and stuff like that. So lots of different kinds. They're also deposit feeders. Different kinds of worms and cnidarians and stuff. Christmas tree worms, because they're cool. Other types of animals. So here's your anatomy. Giant clam. You got like worms. You got urchins. Okay, all sorts of things. You have crustaceans. Crab, shrimp, lobster, all found on the reef. All different kinds. You can find the mantis shrimp on the reef. You can see a predator. You can find little, like, tiny shrimp like creatures that live in sponges and have colonies that resemble bees. Okay. So, just depends. They will be all sorts of different kinds of feeders. You also have mollusks. Um, so you have giant clams that will have symbiotic relationships with zooxanthellae and will be filter feeders as well and help also help to keep the water clear. Um, and the, uh, yeah, their shells will be involved in reef formation as well. Okay. Um, gastropods are like snails. Yes. And these guys are actually really important to the reef itself because algae can grow over the surface and on the surface of the coral. Um, and so these little gastropods actually move around and they actually eat the algae off the surface of the coral and keep the coral clean so that it can get lots of sunlight. So the mollusks are good for that, the gastropods. Um, and then you also get octopus and squid that come and like hunt crabs and stuff like that. Giant clam. You find echinoderm. Okay. So you have all sorts of echinoderms, feather stars, sea urchins, sea stars, turtle stars, crown of thorns, sea star. You get sea cucumbers. Pretty much every kind of echinoderm will be here. And they will range from filter feeders to scavengers to deposit feeders to predators. <laughs> so it's just very And then finally, but definitely not least, you find fish. So all sorts of fish will live on a reef. And they're, you know, when you go snorkeling on a reef, you're there probably to see the fish, right? Because there's lots of different kinds and colors and, of fish, and they're beautiful. So they will be at all levels of the food chain. They can be herbivores. They can be carnivores. They can be scavengers. They can be, you know, deposit feeders, detritivores. Okay, they'll eat everything pretty much. So, I mean, you got butterfly fish, angelfish, parrotfish, barracuda, sharks, like, grouper, lots of different kinds of fish, tangs that live on the reef, enemy fish, lots and lots and lots. So, and then here's some pictures of different kinds of fish. Squirrel fish. Okay. So that's how energy gets passed up the food chain. So you'll get lots of primary productivity, lots of different kinds of animals with lots of different food chains and food that interconnect and create this big, hugely complex food web in the coral reef ecosystem. You also get all sorts of other kinds of interactions besides like predation, okay, that will occur in a reef. Um, one of those things that you'll see is competition. So everybody on a reef is going to be competing for limited resources like food or space or light, um, depending on what type of animal that you are. 
So corals, in particular, will be in competition for space and for light, because they need a hard place to settle down, and then they need sunlight in order to do photosynthesis. So they will be competing with other kinds of corals for that space and that light. Um, and we briefly talked about this already, but branching corals tend to grow faster than the massive corals, the round corals. Um, and so the branching corals grow over, start to grow over the massive corals. And when that happens, the massive corals get upset, right? And they will actually fight back against those branching corals. And what they do is they extend those mesenteric filaments out of their mouth and they digest the branching coral. The branching coral is not helpless. They have sweeper tentacles that they can use, which are these big tentacles that um, have pretty strong nematocysts, and they can go and like sting the massive corals. So they'll, they'll be like battled back and forth for this space and this light um, between the two different kinds of coral. All right? So you do get um, competition. Now, <laughs> corals don't want to be in a perpetual battle because that takes too much energy. Um, and so they, they kind of actually tend to grow in different places on the reef, and only where the two types of coral meet will there be a lot of competition um, for that space and that light. Um, but because massive corals, the round corals, can actually tolerate a little bit more shade than the branching corals can, um, because they're slower growing, they can live deeper on the reef. Whereas the branching corals grow very quickly, they need lots of sunlight, and so they'll actually be found up higher on the reef. So remember when we talked about the four reef slope and I, I told you, you know, you have your encrusting corals at the crest and then branching corals and then massive corals and plate-like and fallacious corals? Okay, the reason why they're that way is to try and avoid competition between each other. Okay, so they grow in different zones. Um, and then where the two meet, that's where they will fight. Okay. You'll also get competition between corals and other types of things that grow on the reef. Um, so there's other animals that live on the reef that try and like compete for space and for light with the coral, like sponges, right? And like soft corals and algae. So soft corals are corals that don't lay down this hard skeleton, okay? So you have like soft corals and stony corals. The stony corals are going to lay down this hard skeleton and be involved in the reef formation. Whereas the soft corals don't lay down the skeleton, they can grow much faster because of that. Um, and the, because they don't lay down the skeleton, they're not involved in the formation of the reef. Okay, so stony corals, because they lay down the skeleton, grow slowly. So they have to be able to, you know, kind of stake their claim on the spot and fight back um, against these other things that try and overgrow them. So what basically what keeps these soft corals and stuff in check and also like algae, because algae grows very quickly and could overgrow coral, what keeps these these things in check is like grazing, so other things, animals eating them, okay? So um, you get grazers that will eat the algae and soft corals and stuff to help keep their population under control to allow all of the other types of stony corals to survive and grow and form the reef. Because if they didn't, then everything would overgrow the corals and the coral reef wouldn't exist. Because these are the things that make the reef, right? Make the whole habitat. Other interactions that you'll see, hydrozoans overgrowing gorgonians, so those are like soft corals. Um, and then fast-growing invertebrates that also try and grow over the reef. So, and those are all kept in check by things eating them. 